Just a day after all charges against the actor Jesse Smollett were dropped, two Chicago police supplemental reports uh, from the case have been made public. They refer to Smollett as an offender, not a victim, adding to the questions and the confusion. Our national correspondent Sarah Seidner is joining us from Chicago right now. Sarah, is anything being done to clear up what happened? That is exactly what the state's attorney is trying to do, and she's spoken out for the first time since being blasted by the mayor and by the police superintendent, defending her office's decision to drop all charges against Jesse Smollett. And this just in, she also says that the entire case was not supposed to be sealed and blamed that on a mistake with the court clerk's office. Tonight, for the first time, the state's well, attorney, yeah, Kim yeah. Fox, speaking out after her office has been roundly criticized for its decision to drop all charges and seal the case against Empire actor Jesse Smollett. Not every case that goes to trial has a finding of guilt. In this instance, um, Mr. Smollett forfeited his $10,000 bond. Um, Mr. Smollett completed community service. So most people who come through the ju or criminal justice system um, don't give up $10,000 uh, of their hard-earned money, money or engage in volunteer services connected with um, an alleged offense um, without viewing that as a way of being held accountable. Fox, who was elected to her post in 2016, said her office should not be making examples of people and the city has more serious crimes to worry about. Not to diminish that what uh, Mr. Smollett was alleged to have done did have an impact on people who were actual victims of hate crime. We have to give due process that we would give to a celebrity or non-celebrity. Is that our criminal justice system has to have mechanisms by which people are held accountable um, and that justice is fair and our resources are being used appropriately. Fox, in office for just over two years, is now facing questions about her handling of the case, questions that arose early on when she recused herself from the case due to contact with Smollett's camp, spelled out in emails and texts. Tina Chen, a former chief of staff to First Lady Michelle Obama, emailed Kim Fox saying she was in touch with Smollett's family. I wanted to give you a call on behalf of Jesse Smollett and family who I know. They have concerns about the investigation, she wrote. Smollett's family member then contacts Fox asking for a chat. Fox eventually responds, spoke to the superintendent earlier. He made the ask, trying to figure out logistics. I'll keep you posted. Smollett's family member responds, OMG, this would be a huge victory. Fox responded, I make no guarantees, but I am trying. The Fraternal Order of Police initially asked for an investigation into Fox's recusal. Now they want more. We'll be asking for a full investigation on the entire matter, uh, why the charges were dropped, and uh, uh, the estate's attorney's involvement in this case. Still, Smollett's attorney maintaining political connections were not used to get the charges dropped. There was no political influence in this case. Um, uh, there, were, there were a team of lawyers. We communicated with the state's attorneys, mm -hmm. and uh, we convinced them that the right thing to do in this case was to dismiss the charges. No one political call that I know of. I don't think anyone political reached out to anyone. Police reports released today reveal new details in the case. One of the brothers who police say Smollett hired to attack him said he used a hot sauce bottle he filled with bleach to pour on Smollett, saying he was shown a large photograph taken of El Yucateco hot sauce bottle, which was recovered on February 7, 2019, near the location, and stated that it was indeed the bottle he filled with bleach and poured on Smollett. Later, the brother tells investigators it felt good that he told the truth. And again, we want to reiterate some new information coming in from the state's attorney saying that the case was sealed. A lot of people talking about that, worrying about that here, thinking that that was quite odd how quickly the case was sealed. She is now saying she believes that the entire case was sealed in error, that the court case was sealed in error. She believes the error made by the clerk's office, and she talked about potentially unsealing it. We are going to be waiting to see if that happens. We certainly have calls into her office and have not uh, received a response. And we are hoping, if the case is unsealed, that we will also get those documents. We'll stay well, very close touch with you, Sarah Seidner, in Chicago for us. We're going to have much more on this story.